Eric Dollard, actually Eric P. Dollard, Maxwell equation, Heaviside Maxwell equation. And then tomorrow will be another presentation, which is the Steinmetz Fortescue mathematics. Yeah, they would have to be broken into much smaller sections, because basically what I presented today is usually a four-year course. Well, learning adults, college course. So this is all standard electrical engineering. It's not really, this is the stuff you're supposed to be learning in school. But I've simplified it down to a point that I've removed all the baggage and it gets right down to business. And the conceptual errors and dimensional errors have all been weeded out. And all the abstract mathematics that people can't understand, that's all been weeded out. So I've simplified it to a level that no one else really has done. With the education system as it exists today, it would be a complete failure to attempt to teach this in high school. The mathematics is not taught. So basically, my presentations are all directed at the, you know, the, how would you say, you know, the practicing electrical, electronic technicians and engineers to help clarify for them how, what's going on. Particularly being that a lot of this information is lost, they haven't received it and it's manifesting itself in aberrations in the power system and communications and, and is actually compromising the security of this country because it's uh, basically weakening everything and making it susceptible to uh, willful interference or natural interference. For example, the electrical grid is entirely being rewired so that it's immersing everybody in a hideous harmonic uh, field of induction and also acts as a receiving antenna for nuclear EMPs that could be delivered by an enemy of the country. Sensible, isn't it? That you would rewire the entire electrical grid and spend billions of dollars doing it just so that a whole thing can take a squat and screw up everybody's equipment and jam out everybody's radios. Makes a lot of sense. Well, it may be either destructive or insane or misled. Maybe it's a conspiracy, maybe it's mass stupidity. Can't tell. It is in use. It's right there on the telephone pole. I just want it, I just want it to be used right and to make sure it works and that people understand how it works because if you're going to be an electrical engineer, you have to know all those things. But from the other side of the coin, then you're going to have somebody that's going to go and they're going to say, that's not right, because they know what is right, and then they will be ostracized and harassed for it. So what good is any of it? So basically, I just do it for my own entertainment. It gives me something to do. It's kind of the theory behind, you know, power and telephone transmission. Of course, there is no more telephone transmission. That's gone. Well, that's rapidly going away. Okay. But power transmission still exists. But it's uh, the electromagnetic process in general, because we're a society that's highly dependent on the phenomena of electromagnetism, and it's everywhere. You know, it's radiating us right now from silly phones and all the rest of that stuff. It's what's flowing through the power lines. Our technology is an electromagnetic technology. So, so electromagnetism has been latched onto by the academians and the Einsteiners and all that and turned into a bunch of, uh, of romantic gobbledygook that makes everybody feel important because nobody can understand it. And it's of absolutely no use to electrical engineers and it's completely useless in teaching beginners uh, the phenomena of electricity and how to engineer it because it just confuses and misrepresents and distorts. It doesn't assist. It actually is uh, inimical to the understanding. So I'm turning all that around so that you can get an idea or the student or the engineer or what have you can get a better grasp of how things work and how to engineer it without having to go to a computer model and get sabotaged by the Chinese inside the computer model. Yeah, there's a website and then I make these presentations every year and I, I've written a number of books. Uh, a couple have got out, but there's no money to 
uh, transcribe the notes into, no one, will, no one will provide money for any of this. Well, the ones that are out are, are the Versa Algebra books. That's the mathematics that, that is utilized for polyphase power engineering. Uh, that mathematics, uh, even by the person that developed it, has never been given a, a clear theoretical basis of how it came about. And, and the way it's presented is extremely difficult for the people learning polyphase mathematics to understand what in the hell's even going on, not alone where it came from. I struggled with it for years. And, uh, and it's in such a way that you can kind of get it for a while, but then it doesn't stick in the head because you're not really taught something that makes sense. You're just following these steps. So I'm trying to get it to the point where there's a clear picture of what the process is that's going on and how it relates to the very fundamentals of mathematics rather than just throwing all of this on somebody in a textbook. Two, uh, two and, and, and tomorrow's presentation will be the third book on that. Then I, when I was destitute in the bushes in Lone Pine, I had nothing else to do, so I just derived all this stuff from scratch, figured the best thing to do was just start from the very beginning and not go back to any reference books or anything at all and just reinvent the whole concept. And that book's called The Lone Pine Writings. So the second edition, or how would you say, the second stage of that is a presentation that I gave today. Uh, there was a small group of people that, that would understand most of it. Most people, you know, just don't really, they just want to see me get up there and bark on stage. That entertains them enough. Usually there's lots of all kinds of, you know, interesting pictures and what have you, but this time I wanted to get, I, I didn't want to waste any time on history or, you know, architectural. I wanted to get right down to business. And getting right down to the business was calculating that California electric power line. That was getting right down to business. Uh, not much. Uh, this time, the people that usually absorb this stuff up and it relates to their work, they never showed up. Where are they? I don't know. Just very few people of the original crowd showed up this time around because of the Corona Carnival. I call it the Carnival. Fair enough. Yeah. Some call it the Corona hoax. Some call it the pan uh, pandemic. It's a carnival. A pathetically sick, twisted carnival. It kind of goes along with the pathetic, sick mentality of the people that are perpetrating it. Because their lives are carnivals. Like vaudeville acts of ultimate depravity. <laughs> no, I don't think that's so much the problem. But... Uh, I mean, you could do, well, right now, because of the Corona Carnival, you're not allowed to congregate or what have you. And, and the thing that I like about Idaho is it, it accommodates my pers personality in that uh, you can't put a leash on the coyote without the experience of teeth. So I'm defiant against the Corona Carnival. And that is a, an active and predominant mentality in this part of the United States. So. I would rather stay around here than go to other places, which I won't, like Malifornia, which I won't go to at all anymore, and have to be subject to the whims of these little petty dictators. I can't, uh, both, both of these presentations are supposed to be books. But, and, and the presentation that I did today is already up to about 300 pages of handwritten notes. There's no money and there's no help to transcribe that material. And at the rate at which it's being done, I will be 102 years old when the material of this presentation is transcribed. This material? And there's no, it won't change. It's just there's no money and there's no interest. It won't move. It's like swimming in molasses, it won't move. And there's nothing I can do. I can pull every trick and connivance in the book to try to force things to happen, and it won't move. Oh yeah, that's whatever exists. That's already, you know, that's set in stone. Aaron takes care of that. Aaron. 
Aaron, yeah. Aaron Murakami. Yeah. And he okay. takes care of it how? Well, it's all stored away in a safe place, and you know, it's on videos, and and the, no, the original diagrams and what have you are all kept in a safe place, so they won't get lost. They're Why would you want to know the safe place? What kind, what kind of question is that? We, we, we just. Do we want to have a trail of ants going to the safe she's place? On own, she's on her own trajectory. Yeah, I'm on my own. Well, I don't know what other questions. Well, you're asking you where it, it, the originals are stored, but as Aaron just pointed out, the material that is available is available through the website. And I would like to know what that website is. That's ericpdollar.com. Mm -hmm. So whatever profits are made out of the writings and what have you, they in turn help keep the building paid off so I have a place to write this stuff and keep my rather extensive library in electrical engineering because I can't carry it all around in my car. After a certain point, the, it just goes out the window. Digital is a totalitarian mind state and it wants to destroy all of this. Right now as we speak, there's people with torches and axes doing that. Actually, they don't know what they want to do. They're being directed because they're mindless, useless pieces of garbage and they just do what the television or their device tells them to do. And the instigators that direct them are the ones that have the money and they will not, they will pay inordinate quantities of money to make sure I can't do this stuff rather than give me even a insignificant quantity of money to do it. So this is the society we live in. So basically it's a hopeless situation. I can get dribble funds, you know, to keep the lights on and keep the car running and keep my belly full, you know, and buy pens and paper and clothes when I need them, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But as far as getting, you know, my notes all transcribed or getting these lines that were provided to me finished and getting receivers on them and getting the terminal building spilt and getting a laboratory, I don't believe it'll ever happen. I'm the one that actually can put it in the commercial service. Okay. Can you frame it? I'm the only one that can actually put it in the commercial service okay. and have to a certain level. It was Radio Corporation of America that uh, the reason why they were my patron back from childhood up until when they fell apart is because I was the only hope left for RCA to come up with a method of communications uh, that would remain in competition with the satellite communications that was putting our stations out of business. And unfortunately it took about 20 years to get to that point, but uh, once I was able to develop the Tesla system, that's exactly what RCA was looking for, but now there's no more RCA. So the application was shipped to shore, so if you transmit through the substance of the earth, you're transmitting from the water into the hull of the ship and receiving that way so you don't need the ionosphere and you don't need any satellites. So the ship to shore communications would be clear and uh, noise and distortion free. It wouldn't require massive facilities. But the next thing that destroyed that was the general bandwidth glut once uh, society took the bite of the apple. And that's what destroyed Bell Telephone and everything. Gluttonry. Information bandwidth gluttonry. Until finally now it's turned into 5G so it can just screw everything up. Well, what it was is, is the, the whole Colorado transformer project that Tesla was working on has been so misrepresented. And Tesla did such a lousy job of, uh, of presenting it himself and there's so many charlatans running around using it for their own self-edification that, uh, that I had decided with another person that I was collaborating with at the time, well, no one really has any quantitative data on this. Let's build a scale model and analyze it physically and mathematically and come up with the concrete data. And not only that, but make it light the light bulb. Because after all, if you're an electrical engineer, if the lights don't come on, you don't get paid. And it worked. What? Oh, okay. Oh, he's doing fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
I saw, I was thinking. The I've only got one eye that works all the way. <laughs> and the one that does work all the way has got some crap in it the past couple days and I'm not seeing too good. Well, if he fast forwards as he's editing, it's going to be. Oh. Yeah. Just a little tip. But right. It's okay. Okay, but see, I was I was anticipating that you would hold up a fluorescent tube and that that would light, and I smelled all of that ozone in that room. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I was well, I look at who's talking. I can't help myself. <laughs> yeah, I can't help myself. Well, we got that recorded, so everybody yeah. knows where your eyes are going. Right. And like I, I say, they're here. they're not working too good. <laughs> That's good. Okay. I didn't think we were done, but... Oh, well, no, well, you got more questions. So sure, go I ahead. Don't... Keep going. Well, at one time, that was kind of, you know, when you said brownies, That's there was it, there was a neighborhood in an era where that meant marijuana brownies. There was a neighborhood Yeah, in I accidentally ate a plate of them once, and, oh. uh, and in the Navy, when I was known as the human vacuum cleaner, and uh, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know that you know that they had that level of concentration because I never got high smoking, and uh, boy, they knocked my head silly. Yeah, well, I don't want to encourage him to use drugs. 